Assessment of hepatic and biliary function. Health history. If liver function test results are abnormal, the patient may need to be evaluated for liver disease. In such cases, the health history will focus on exposure of the patient to hepatotoxic substances or infectious agents. The patient's occupational, recreational, and travel history may assist in identifying exposure to hepatotoxins, e.g., industrial chemicals, other toxins, responsible for illness. The patient's history of alcohol and drug use, including but not limited to the use of injectable drugs, provides additional information about exposure to toxins and infectious agents. A careful medication history to assess hepatic dysfunction should address all prescribed and over-the-counter medications, herbal remedies, and dietary supplements used by the patient currently and in the past. Lifestyle behaviors that increase the risk for exposure to infectious agents are identified. Injectable drug use, sexual practices, and a history of foreign travel are all potential risk factors for liver disease. The amount, duration, and type of alcohol consumption. The family history includes questions about familial liver disorders that may have their etiology in alcohol abuse or gallstone disease, as well as other familial or genetic diseases, such as hemochromatosis, Wilson's disease, or alpha-1 antitrypsin disease. The history also includes reviewing symptoms that suggest liver disease such as jaundice, malaise and weakness fatigue, pruritus, abdominal pain, fever and anorexia, weight gain, edema and increasing abdominal girth, hemichmesis, melina, hematochesia, passage of bloody stools, Easy bruising, decreased libido in men and secondary amenorrhea in women. Changes in mental acuity, personality changes, and sleep disturbances. Physical examination. The nurse assesses the patient for physical signs that may occur with liver dysfunction, including pallor of chronic illness and jaundice. The skin, mucosa, and sclerae are inspected for jaundice, and the extremities are assessed for muscle atrophy, edema, and skin excoriation secondary to scratching. The nurse observes the skin for petechiae or ecchymotic areas, bruises, spider angiomas, and palmar erythma. The male patient is assessed for unilateral or bilateral gynecomastia and testicular atrophy due to endocrine changes. The patient's cognitive status, recall, memory, abstract thinking, and neurologic status are assessed. The nurse observes for general tremor, asterixes, weakness, and slurred speech. The nurse assesses the abdomen for dilated abdominal wall veins, ascites, and a fluid wave. The abdomen is palpated to assess liver size and to detect any tenderness over the liver. Tenderness of the liver implies recent acute enlargement with consequent stretching of the liver capsule. The absence of tenderness may imply that the enlargement is of long-standing duration. Common clinical manifestations of hepatic dysfunction. Jaundice, resulting from increased bilirubin concentration in the blood. Portal hypertension, ascites, and varices, resulting from circulatory changes within the diseased liver and producing severe GI hemorrhages and marked sodium and fluid retention. Nutritional deficiencies, which result from the inability of the damaged liver cells to metabolize certain vitamins, responsible for impaired functioning of the central and peripheral nervous systems and for abnormal bleeding tendencies. Hepatic encephalopathy or coma, reflecting accumulation of ammonia in the serum due to impaired protein metabolism by the diseased liver. Liver function tests LFT. Liver function tests, also known as liver chemistries, help determine the health of liver by measuring the levels of proteins, liver enzymes, and bilirubin in blood. Liver functions. Liver tests can help determine if liver is working correctly. The liver performs a number of vital bodily functions, such as removing contaminants from blood, converting nutrients from the foods eat, storing minerals and vitamins, regulating blood clotting, producing cholesterol, proteins, enzymes, and bile, making factors that fight infection 
removing bacteria from blood, processing substances that could harm body, maintaining hormone balances, regulating blood sugar levels. Problems with the liver can make a person very sick and can even be life-threatening. Symptoms of a liver disorder Symptoms of a liver disorder include Weakness Fatigue or loss of energy Weight loss Jaundice, yellow skin and eyes Fluid collection in the abdomen, known as ascites Discolored bodily discharge, dark urine or light stools Nausea Wanting Diarrhea Abdominal pain Abnormal bruising or bleeding Purpose A liver function test is often recommended in the following situations. To check for damage from liver infections, such as hepatitis B and hepatitis C. To monitor the side effects of certain medications known to affect the liver. If client already have a liver disease, to monitor the disease and how well a particular treatment is working. If client is experiencing the symptoms of a liver disorder. If client has certain medical conditions such as high triglycerides, diabetes, high blood pressure, or anemia. If client drinks alcohol heavily. If client has gallbladder disease. Commonly used tests to check liver abnormalities. Alanine transaminase, ALT. Aspartate aminotransferase, AST. Alkaline phosphatase, ALB. Albumin. Bilirubin. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase, GGT. Alanine transaminase, ALT, test. Alanine transaminase, ALT, is used by body to metabolize protein. If the liver is damaged or not functioning properly, ALT can be released into the blood. This causes ALT levels to increase. A higher than normal result on this test can be a sign of liver damage. According to the American College of Gastroenterology, an ALT above 25 IUL, international units per liter, in females and 33 IUL in males typically requires further testing and evaluation. Aspartate aminotransferase, AST, test. Aspartate aminotransferase, AST, is an enzyme found in several parts of body, including the heart, liver, and muscles. Since AST levels aren't as specific for liver damage as ALT, it's usually measured together with ALT to check for liver problems. When the liver is damaged, AST can be released into the bloodstream. A high result on an AST test might indicate a problem with the liver or muscles. The normal range for AST is typically up to 40 IUL in adults and may be higher in infants and young children. Alkaline phosphatase, ALP, test. Alkaline phosphatase, ALP, is an enzyme found in bones, bile ducts, and liver. An ALP test is typically ordered in combination with several other tests. High levels of ALP may indicate liver inflammation, blockage of the bile ducts, or a bone disease. Children and adolescents may have elevated levels of ALP because their bones are growing. Pregnancy can also raise ALP levels. The normal range for ALP is typically up to 120 UL in adults. Albumin test. Albumin is the main protein made by liver. It performs many important bodily functions. For example, albumin. Stops fluid from leaking out of blood vessels. Nourishes tissues. Transports hormones, vitamins, and other substances throughout body. An albumin test measures how well liver is making this particular protein. A low result on this test can indicate that liver isn't functioning properly. The normal range for albumin is 3.55.0 grams per deciliter, GDL. However, low albumin can also be a result of poor nutrition, kidney disease, infection, and inflammation. Bilirubin test. Bilirubin is a waste product from the breakdown of red blood cells. It's ordinarily processed by the liver. It passes through the liver before being excreted through stool. A damaged liver can't properly process bilirubin. This leads to an abnormally high level of bilirubin in the blood. A high result on the bilirubin test may indicate that the liver isn't functioning properly. The normal range for total bilirubin is typically 0.11.2 mg per deciliter, MGDL. 
there are certain inherited diseases that raise bilirubin levels, but the liver function is normal. Gamma glutamyl transpeptidase thus, GGT. GGT is a microsomal enzyme found in hepatocytes, biliary epithelial cells, renal tubules, pancreas, and intestines. It helps in glutathione metabolism by transporting peptides across the cell membrane. Much like ALP, GGT measurements are usually elevated if cholestasis is present. In acute viral hepatitis, the GGT levels can peak at second and third week of illness, and remained elevated at six weeks of illness. GGT is also elevated in 30% of the hepatitis C patients. GGT can increase by 10 times in alcoholism. GGT can increase by 2 to 3 times in 50% of the patients with non-alcoholic liver disease. When GGT levels is elevated, the triglyceride level is elevated also. With insulin treatment, the GGT level can reduce. Other causes of elevated GGT are, diabetes mellitus, acute pancreatitis, myocardial infarction, anorexia nervosa, guillain bass syndrome, hyperthyroidism, obesity and myotonic dystrophy. Reference range, 9 to 85 IUL. Other tests. Other tests are requested alongside LFT to rule out specific causes. 5. Nucleotidase. 5. Nucleotidase, 5 NTD, is a glycoprotein found throughout the body, in the cytoplasmic membrane, catalyzing the conversion to inorganic phosphates from nucleoside 5 phosphate. Its level is raised in conditions such as obstructive jaundice, parenchymal liver disease, liver metastases, and bone disease. Reference range, 0 to 15 IUL. Ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is an acute phase protein synthesized in the liver. It is the carrier of the copper ion. Its levels is increased in infections, rheumatoid arthritis, pregnancy, non-Wilson liver disease and obstructive jaundice. In Wilson disease, the ceruloplasmin level is depressed which lead to copper accumulation in body tissues. Reference range, 200-600 mgL. Alpha fetoprotein, AFP. AFP is significantly expressed in fetal liver. However, the mechanism that led to the suppression of AFP synthesis in adults is not fully known. Exposure of the liver to cancer-causing agents and arrest of liver maturation in childhood can lead to the rise in AFP. AFP can reach until 400-500 mgL in hepatocellular carcinoma. AFP concentration of more than 400 mgL is associated with greater tumor size, involvement of both lobes of liver, portal vein invasion and a lower median survival rate. Reference range, 0 to 15 mgL. Coagulation test. The liver is responsible for the production of the vast majority of coagulation factors. In patients with liver disease, international normalized ratio, INR, can be used as a marker of liver synthetic function as it includes factor 7, which has the shortest half-life, 26 hours, of all coagulation factors measured in INR. In liver disease the synthesis of both are decreased and some patients are even found to be hypercoagulable, increased tendency to clot, despite an elevated INR. In liver patients, coagulation is better determined by more modern tests such as thromboelastogram, TEG, or thromboelastrometry, Rotem. Prothrombin time, PT, and its derived measures of prothrombin ratio, PR, and INR are measures of the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. This test is also called, ProTime INR, and, INRPT. They are used to determine the clotting tendency of blood, in the measure of warfarin dosage, liver damage, and vitamin K status. Serum Glucose The serum glucose test, abbreviated as, BG, or, GLU, measures the liver's ability to produce glucose, gluconeogenesis, it is usually the last function to be lost in the setting of fulminant liver failure. Lactate dehydrogenous. Lactate dehydrogenous, LDH, is found in many body tissues, including the liver. Elevated levels of LDH may indicate liver damage. LDH isotype 1, or cardiac, is used for estimating damage to cardiac tissue, although troponin and creatine kinase tests are preferred.
Preparation for a liver function test. The doctor will give client complete instructions on how to prepare for the blood sample portion of the test. Certain medications and foods may affect levels of these enzymes and proteins in blood. The doctor may ask client to avoid some types of medications, or they may ask client to avoid eating anything for a period of time before the test. Be sure to continue drinking water prior to the test. Client may want to wear a shirt with sleeves that can easily be rolled up to make it easier to collect the blood sample. Procedure Client may have blood drawn in a hospital or at a specialized testing facility. To administer the test, the healthcare provider will clean skin before the test to decrease the likelihood that any microorganisms on skin will cause an infection. They'll likely wrap an elastic strap on arm. This will help veins become more visible. They'll use a needle to draw samples of blood from arm. After the draw, the healthcare provider will place some gauze and a bandage over the puncture site. Then they'll send the blood sample to a laboratory for testing. The risks of a liver function test. Blood draws are routine procedures and rarely cause any serious side effects. However, the risks of giving a blood sample can include bleeding under the skin or hematoma. Excessive bleeding, fainting, infection, liver biopsy. Liver biopsy is the removal of a small amount of liver tissue, usually through needle aspiration. It permits examination of liver cells. The most common indication is to evaluate diffuse disorders of the parenchyma and to diagnose space occupying lesions. Liver biopsy is especially useful when clinical findings and laboratory tests are not diagnostic of liver disease. Other diagnostic tests Ultrasonography, computed tomography, CT, and magnetic resonance imaging MRI, are used to identify normal structures and abnormalities of the liver and biliary tree. A radioisotope liver scan may be performed to assess liver size and hepatic blood flow and obstruction. Laparoscopy, insertion of a fiber optic endoscope through a small abdominal incision, is used to examine the liver and other pelvic structures. It is also used to perform guided liver biopsy, to determine the etiology of ascites, and to diagnose and stage tumors of the liver and other abdominal organs. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, ERCP endoscopic visualization of the common bile, pancreatic, and hepatic ducts with a flexible fiber optic endoscope inserted into the esophagus, passed through the stomach and into the duodenum so guys thanks for watching my video you can like and comment on my video but don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel to watch quality content like this thank you guys